Can you uh, let me know when I'm on, Annette, please? We are on, we are live on YouTube. Excellent, okay. So welcome everyone uh, to this continuation of uh, the uh, public meeting from uh, last month. I'm gonna call this meeting to order before I get going. I am just gonna do some housekeeping. Uh, you are all being muted by our CAO um, uh, because there were people that decided to chime in last time. This is the decision we made. Also, you will know that your chat feature has been disabled. Um, this is not a debate uh, or a delegation. This is a public meeting. Um, and I know that there was some concern about uh, letters being read and running out of time for presentations um, and people wanted it the other way around. Unfortunately, that is not how the Planning Act works and this is the agenda that we are, are left with. Um, when we're done all of the letter reading, uh, I will open it up to presentations by both those uh, in support and those opposed. If you have uh, written a letter Council has decided that that letter stands as a presentation. Uh, council is in receipt of all letters uh, and the list of um, people that sent them. And uh, we want to thank you for taking the time uh, to, uh, to send us those letters. So uh, with that, um, I, I did call the meeting to order. Um, this is for a zoning amendment, for a proposed zoning amendment in which the purpose and effect is to update the existing definition for trailers and recreational vehicles. In addition, the proposed zoning amendment would change the land use provisions for the limited service residential, limited service residential two, rural residential, rural, rural residential four zones to permit a trailer recreational vehicle to be used for accommodation. Is there any declaration of interest? Seeing none. Clerk's reports on notices. So the notice of the meeting was uh, advertised in the Eganville Leader. It was also on the Buncher Valley website as well. Thank you. Um, and uh, we will get uh, going with reading of written comments. Uh, Annette, if you would like, you can mute all of council or do we mute ourselves? You can mute yourselves, that's fine. Okay, so council can mute themselves. Uh, for those that are joining us today, uh, just be aware that some of us don't have the best internet. If you see us go dark for a minute, we're still here. <clears throat> it's just a, a matter of bandwidth. So with that, I will mute myself and I will turn this over. Annette, will you uh, begin with the written comments or did you? Sure, I, I can start and then I can, I can pass them over um, as we go. Perfect, thank you very much. Take it away, Annette. Thank you. So the first uh, letter that I have to read is from uh, Douglas uh, Davies, and it says, Dear Mayor Murphy, Councillor Patrick, Councillor uh, Shizen, Councillor Rosner, and Councillor Buckwald, I am writing to you to express my absolute displeasure regarding your proposed changes to the bylaws regarding RVs and their use on Lake Clear. Quite frankly, I am appalled at everything you have suggested in your proposal. After five years of meetings, not to mention the involvement of two councils, it's extremely disappointing that this issue has not been resolved to the satisfaction of all concerned. I am surprised and dismayed that this is the best you can do to provide a solution that would appeal to the majority. It was also disappointing that at the January 20th committee meeting, after all this time, that the building inspector, Mark Schroeder, had to explain that the term at, what the term at capacity means. I enjoy having friends and family at the lake, even with RVs or trailers. However, there should be a timeline regarding length of stay and rules regarding the collection and disposal of black and gray matter. I cannot understand why members of council are worried and commenting about who paid to have the lawyer's letter published. It should be enough to say that there are people who care enough to get a legal opinion. Why is council going against the Renfrew County official plan? Why hasn't the council heeded the advice of the experts? The BVT bylaws, the Renfrew County official plan and the provincial policy statement all recognize the unique and fragile status, status of Lake Clear. And the bylaws do not permit the use of RVs as cottages, cottage replacements or supplements. I would like to know why council refused to share any or all legal advice with the LCPOA. Has council asked for any legal advice? If so, in the interest of transparency, why would they not share it with the general public? In conclusion, it seems to me that this recommendation of a bylaw change seems to favor a few, not the general populace. I and my family certainly would not want to see up to four RVs allowed on a lot next to us. Perhaps 
uh, plebiscite should be allowed and those who are affected by the lake and its environs should decide what is best. Sincerely, Doug Davies. Dear Mayor Murphy and the Bonter Valley Council, we are writing this letter to express our concern regarding the overreach of the Lake Clear Property Owners Association. Currently, we are members of this organization in part because we care about our lake, but also in part to keep tabs on the initiatives the association takes. We find it disturbing that they are persisting to follow, persisting in following the RV issue without the support of a majority of the members. We also find it disheartening to learn that they may have spent membership money to obtain a legal opinion on the RVs without consulting the membership at large. In our opinion, we do not feel based on the information we have reviewed that the seasonal RVs are causing any issues with the lake. We also feel that the LCPOA is trying to circumvent the township bylaw process by trying to bully the township to meet their demands. Our council has heard countless individuals for and against the RVs and have listened to experts on the issue. We have elected you to make the right decisions for our township and we have confidence in your ability. This legal opinion once again shows that some members of the LCPOA will only accept a decision that meets their demands. It's just not right. Sincerely, Don and Brenda Polatsky. A sad future for Boncher Valley. If you are the owner of a house, cottage, or farm anywhere outside the town of Eganville in Boncher Valley, a property perhaps that you have invested a lot of time and money into, hoping to maybe sell someday or to pass on as something of value to your children, then you should be aware that your investment is severely threatened by a proposed bylaw that will allow the existing zoning bylaws under, under a bus, that will throw the existing zoning bylaw under, bylaws under a bus. They are proposing that any property outside of the town of Eganville be allowed to contain and occupy up to four recreational vehicles on a permanent basis without restrictions. They can be placed at the property line, at the water line, no minimum property size, and they will not be taxed. If the RVs are owned by the property owner, they, then they can also be rented out. If your neighbor installs four RVs on his or hers 50 by 100 foot lot, then your property will be worth, worth one third less. If two of your neighbors do this, then you won't be able to give your property away. Groups will see the advantages to buy up small cottage properties, fill them with RVs and enjoy a tax-free existence, or perhaps to purchase properties next to large crown land parcels and establish a tax-free hunting compound. We will all live in fear when we see a for sale sign go up in our neighborhood. I know you're saying that this lad is overreacting and that this may never happen in my neighborhood. However, be aware that any real estate lawyer worth his salt will quickly warn against investing in any property located in Boncher Valley. There is no doubt that we will all end up losing. Why would you risk investing in a new re retail business? Why develop a new subdivision when the first person that buys one of your lots could install four RVs at the property line, rent them out? You can only watch as all interests in the remaining lots evaporate. The most severe effects will be felt along the shorelines of Boncher Valley with Golden Lake, Silver Lake, Constant Lake, Lake Clear, and Boncher River system, and at the countless number of small lakes such as Kelly's Lake located off the Opagongo Road. If this bylaw passes, then 24 RVs would immediately be, per be permitted on the privately owned islands of Lake Clear. Then another 36 or more would be allowed on the remaining islands after the ALC is signed. How did we get here? A small group of perhaps half a dozen or so well-to-do and well-connected landowners whom are fortunate enough to hold large amounts of shoreline along Lake Clear that all wanted to find a way to get around environmental restrictions in order to create family compounds without having to pay taxes. Ironically, one of the leaders in this activity is a builder extraordinaire who makes a good living for himself and his family, mainly replacing old cottages and new homes around the shore of Lake Clear for people who thought their neighborhood was safe and protected by zoning, believing that it would be a nice place to live or retire. All evidence indicates that this group has the current council inside their tent or RV. Eganville is protected from this rezoning, not because the council thinks more highly of the folks that live there or their investments, but rather that they are afraid that the town's sewage and water systems might be overtaxed. No environmental concerns for the rest of the municipality though. Most of the tax revenue that the municipality receives comes from the waterfront areas in Boncher Valley. However, if this zoning change goes through, I will immediately appeal to MPAC and request a 50% decrease in property value for both my rural and shoreline properties to help compensate for my financial loss. I believe that I have a strong case. I hope that everyone else does the same, perhaps a class action appeal. Does this mean that the town of Eganville will have to make up the difference? I will continue to support the arena privately. 
No one minds a property owner using an RV while he waits to build his home or cottage, and certainly visitors that arrive for a couple of weeks with an RV are fine with me anywhere. However, the proposed bylaw seems despicable, vindictive, and divisive, divisive, and will result in the ruin of neighborhoods and landscapes that are mostly populated with people that believe in paying taxes and supporting our community, a fine legacy for this council. I hope that you share my concern and that you will send a note to council letting them know. Also place a phone call with each councillor and the mayor. Don Filman. Mayor Murphy and Bontra Valley Council. I am in agreement with the proposed zoning bylaw amendment 2006-28 regarding RVs. Thank you for your time and effort on this issue. William John Dunahue. Uh, I am a Lake Clear cottage owner and I do not support the bylaw change, but I do support the LCPOA's effort to resolve lake issues. Thank you, Wayne Smith. Yes, I agree with the proposal to allow trailers at Lake Clear. I find this absurd that this is even an issue. Signed, Peggy Patterson. To whom it may concern, please note my strong opposition to the bylaws regarding the number of RVs permitted on each lot on Lake Clear. There is no good that can result for the lake or the community by allowing multiple RVs on a lot. To allow such buildings to be erected free from any regulations appears arbitrary. The rest of the land, cottage owners are subject to regulations on buildings and additions, so it is difficult to comprehend if I'm a property owner and have been going to my family cottage on Lake Clear for close to 50 years. Please keep our lake safe and pristine for the next generations. Thank you for your consideration, Susan Kelly. To Mayor Murphy and Bontra Valley Township Council members, we have followed the many letters to the editor discussions and are so glad to hear this matter is finally going to be put to rest. We are not members of the Lake Clear Property Association because we do not feel everyone on the lake is being represented, just a select few. But when an issue is so controversial as this, we feel we need to have a say. We do have an RV on our lot on Lake Clear for our kids to stay in while visiting for the weekend. We also empty dark water in Eganville at the new dumping station. We are in agreement with the proposed zoning bylaw amendment to 2006-28 regarding the use of RVs. We also assume this bylaw regulates all lakes in this township, Vivian Rosine and Orville Rosine. Dear Mayor Murphy and Bontra Valley Township Council, we are proud owners of Lake Clear property and are writing to express our agreement with the proposed zoning bylaw amendment 2006-28 regarding RVs. We are offended by the LCPOA's accusations of trailer owners mistreating our precious lake, and we look forward to joining the BVT Council meeting today. Thank you, kindest regards, Julie and Sean Banks. To Mayor Murphy and Bontra Valley Township Council. Our family is in agreement with the proposed zoning bylaw amendment 2006-28 regarding RVs. We were never contacted or consulted with by the executive of the Lake Clear Property Association before they submitted their RV issue to Bontra Valley Township, and we are members. We believe a better focus for the Lake Clear Property Association should be the reduction of seagull population on the lake, especially on Little Rock Island. The seagull crap caused high E. coli readings in the public beach area a few years back. The current bylaw amendment addresses what an RV is, and if you fall out of that definition, then additional regulations kick in. Let's deal with eliminating the seagull, seagull crap, going into the lake, and then on ensuring existing permanent buildings are not causing issues to the lake. We believe that RVs cause significantly less problems to the lake than permanent structures. Thank you for your time and effort on this issue. Yours truly, Don and Marianne Rosine, Rob and Krista St. Louis, Stephen and Chantal Rosine. Hi, Dana and Bontra Valley Township Council. I just want to let you know that not everyone at Lake Clear agrees with the LCPOA board stance in which they are taking issue with RVs at Lake Clear. Members of LCPOA were not consulted for feedback or polled in a vote before the board wrote and submitted their presentations to council, so they do not represent members, property owners, or BV residents. I wanted to let you know this because they have now asked property owners, their families, and their friends who aren't even taxpayers in the township to all write letters that they do not support the proposed bylaw presumably to make it look more like everyone supports them, but in fact, a large portion of all those names they will report as support have no say in the township. I support the bylaw. Other ways to conserve the lake could be change to four stroke motors and eliminate gray and possibly black water draining into the lake from island camping. I am sure you will solve this issue in the best interests of our township. Thank you, Kathy Haycock. So I'm going to take a break now and pass it on to Dana. Mayor Murphy and councillors, we wish to register our strongest objection to the proposed bylaw amendment, specifically as it might apply to Lake Clear. As you know, Lake Clear is designated at capacity by the relevant authorities whose policy statements and guiding principles 
respecting sensitive lake prohibit the placement of RVs on LC properties. Your proposal is clearly in contravention of the, of the relevant provincial, county, and township laws and policies at, and at minimum must e expressively exclude Lake Clear. Sincerely, Derek and Susan Sweet. Our family has owned property on Lake Clear for over 65 years. Number of rec recreational vehicles on lots are impacting Lake Clear. Bylaws 2.159 recreational vehicle means a structure or vehicle designated intended or used as a accommodation exclusively for travel, recreation and vacation, and which is either capable of being drawn by a passenger vehicle or is self -propel propelled and shall include travel trailers, tent trailers, van, motor homes and so similar transportable accommodation excepting a mobile home. Zoom committee meetings repeatedly suggested that RVs should simply be pulled into a property, stayed for a visit, then to be towed away, and therefore they could be situated anywhere on the property, not subject to setback provisions, etc. This is not the case. Most of these RVs on Lake Clear are used for the entire summer and left in place permanently. Development is not permitted on Lake Clear, including with building within 30 meters of the shoreline. We want Lake Clear and other sensitive lakes around Lake Clear to be protected, environmentally stable. RVs on waterfront properties are often environmental, stressing, untaxed, and often commercial developments even worse now with possible future of the Airbnbs. Why should someone be able to place four RVs on their property and others are limited to only one cottage and one sleep cabin? It is unfair that RVs are not subject to the same septic system, rigid land use, environmental regulations and taxes as our cottages. Don't allow these un RVs unfair advantages, get rid of them. Thank you, Susan Wolf Fedden Hamilton and Linda Wolf Fedden Lumstein. To Mayor Murphy and Buncher Valley Township Council, we are we are in agreement with the proposed zoning law bylaw amendment 2006-28 regarding RVs. Thank you for your time and effort on this issue. Your article in the Eganville Leader earlier this month that addressed this matter was very good. We are proud that council is standing up for the local people and not the city people. Whispering Pines Resort, Barry Birch, Donna Birch, Elmer Plath, Carol Plath, Marilyn Schooley, Matthew Schooley. Yes, we agree with the uh, proposal to allow trailers at Lake Clear. Victoria and Chris Rodriguez. To Boucher Valley Council, I'd like to state that I do, do not have any concerns with the proposed changes to bylaw 2006 28, Sam Pink. To begin with, it is my opinion that the local board of the LCPOA have been somewhat misleading their, rep, their presentation, not only to council, but the public at large. We only learned of the proposal to council from the leader. There has never been a vote by members of the LCPA or owners who are not members. This could easily be seen by sending out to each property owner what the board considered to be a, the problem and how they plan to proceed. One could simply check, simply check, I agree or disagree. The results then would be made public. I also have concerns about the recent email, January 27, 2021, from Ms. Leanne Pepper, in which she is encouraging people to to sign an electronic petition. The problem here is that it allows for only one response. I agree. In my opinion, this is no way truly reflects the concerns of the property owners. Other emails are pleading for anyone to be the family, friends, or occasional renters to sign the petition. One could you then use the argument that anyone from anywhere could sign not knowing where Lake Clear is located or what the issues are being discussed. I I find this tactic to be totally unethical. Again, this was never voted on by the property owners. In the January 27th issue in the leader, Ms. Bates states that, that a group of property owners who remain anonymous decided to pursue the RV issue on their own and to obtain a legal opinion on behalf of the LCPOA. I have no objection to either an individual or group seeking legal advice if they're willing to pay for it out of their pockets. If the board of the LCPA is financing this option, it should be voted on by the members and all the property owners. To my knowledge, this has not been the case. I agree with Ms. Bates that this is a problem that was not created by the LCPOA. 
I think that Mr. Bob Peltzer's letter to the editor, A Recipe for Failure, clearly and accurately describes the situation that has now become before council. I also supported a both Mr. Tom Dancy and Mr. Herb Weckworth, whose letters in the January 20th, 21 edition of the leader outlining a common sense approach to the RV problem. When one considers the issues of RVs, several questions come to mind. A, how many RVs on the, on the lake are used as permanent residents? I find it hard to imagine someone living in a trailer throughout these extremely cold winters. B, we now learn that the the LUC made both land and water survey of the lake in assessing the uses of RVs. Did they receive permission to go onto someone's property? Did they find, did they determine what these RVs were being used for? I'm therefore somewhat skeptical of their findings. I have been reviewing my previous emails and came upon one dated January, sorry, December 9th, 2020, sent out by Ms. Leanne Pepper in which she refers to the Algonquin land claims and grave concerns this will have on, on the lake's ecosystem. It, it will be interesting to see the LCPOA's board response when this eventually goes into effort. In closing, I am deeply saddened by the recent events that have occurred around the past few years. There will be no winners here. Everyone loses and I feel what we will be leaving to our children and future generations will not be something that sh should one should take pride in. To paraphrase the late JFK, let us not fear to legislate, but let us not legislate out of fear. Thank you to the members for taking my time to re review my response, Brian Christensen. Hello, as a paid member of the LCPOA and the last time I will be a member, I strongly disagree to what the association has become personal interests and claiming it's in the best interests of the lake. I'm happy that council has made us a stand to put this to rest. All this has been doing is dividing neighbors. Lake Clear and all lakes in Renford County belong to the people, not just to a few who are fortunate enough to own property on a lake. I am one of the fortunate ones on Lake Clear. I believe the Lake Clear Property Owners Association should be disbanded and a new organization begin. Friends of Renford County Lakes. I agree with your motion regards Don, Donald Kelly and Gail Kelly, Renford County taxpayers. Township of Boncher Valley Council, we wish to state that we do not have been any concerns with the proposed changes to the bylaw to 2006-28. I grew up at Lake Clare, my parents owned property and water frontage on Lake Clare for over 30 years. It would be very disheartening for our young family to not have the opportunity to put a pop-up camper slash trailer on a portion of their property until we could afford to build a family cottage in the future. Thank you for your careful consideration of our many residents and their families who cherish their time and respectful usage of this beautiful lake and natural resources. Kind regards, Tanya and Derek and Jack. Dear Mayor Murphy, Councillor Rosner, Buckwalt, Patrick Concision, CAO Gilchrist and Ms. Jennings. I understand there is a proposal to amend a, a zoning bylaw, update existing definitions for trailers and recreational vehicles, and changing land use, land use provisions, subsequently allowing up to four RVs on most Boncher Valley Township lots, excluding the village of Eagleville. I'm quite concerned about such an amendment and how it could potentially affect the environment and property values in the township, and in particular on Lake Clare. First, some questions. Why four RVs? Why not de de uh, dependent on lot size and location? Why is, is the village of Eganville excluded? Why is Lake Clear's at capacity designation not taken into consideration? As you know, development on Lake Clear is restricted and regulated because of its at capacity designation. RVs that are used as, as cottage replacements are clearly a form of development and should they be restricted and regulated? This new proposal would appear to, to fly in the face of this fact and not be aligned with the Brentford County official plan. After more than five years, numerous meetings, legal opinions, letters from the public and presentations from various parties, including a ministry scientist, how is it possible that you have come up with this? I do not understand. While it doesn't make sense to me for, the, for any part of the township, it most certainly makes no sense for Lake Clare. My family has owned property on Lake Clare for, 66, for over 66 years. 
As a full-time resident, property owner, taxpayer, and voter, I am fervently opposed to the proposed amendment. I look forward to your continued discussion at the February 16th Zoom um, meeting. Yours truly, Colleen Beanish. I'm currently, I am a current property owner and taxpayer at Lake Clare, and I would like my voice to heard. I'm writing regarding the bylaw that would al allow up to four RVs on many lots. However, you vote on this issue, please exclude Lake Clare property from this bylaw. Lake Clare is a fragile and beautiful lake and needs to be protected. Our lake is at capacity. Allowing up to four RVs on the pro property puts on an already fragile lake at risk. As a cottage, as a cottage property owner, we have tried to change build plans because due to the distance from the shoreline, respecting the set, setbacks and regulations. The RV should have to follow the same uh, setback rules, but don't. As a cottage owner and taxpayer, this is unfair to property owners that follow the rules and pay taxes on their buildings. I want my voice heard, and we are against having RVs allowed on waterfront properties. Thank you for your consideration, and please protect our lake and property. Karen Kelly Nicholson. Dear Madam Mayor and BVT Councillors, I'm writing my voice. I'm writing to voice my dismay regarding the proposed bylaw amendment dealing with RV perforation on Lake Clear. It is a given, sorry, it is a given that too many humans on any water body, unless precautions are taken, will likely be a contributor to the decline of water quality. If Lake Clear becomes Lake Murky, what happens then? All of the cottages and homes to date have had to comply with regulations such as setbacks and approved septic systems. If everyone cuts all the trees, put in a hard landscapes at the shoreline, then build buildings anywhere they pleased, our lake would not be what it is today. The lake is there for all to enjoy. However, we must be careful as to not abuse its ecosystem. Let's work together to find a solution so that we can all swim and play on and in our water for years to come. Let's set up and establish ways to keep the lake healthy. Let's use the knowledge and experience from other lake communities to learn from them to our advantage. In other words, we need to be wise. Maintaining our friendly community while choosing how to monitor the impact of people on a lake is clear. An RV per sea is not the problem. The problem is related to how many there are, how close, how close they are located to the lake edge and how they deal with gray water and sewage. Current rules, of, current rules allow for only one dwelling per lot of record. Why can there not be the same for all? whatever the structure. Thanks for the consideration, Jay Earl, Lake Clear property owner. Dana, I'm gonna give you a break and go on to Sandra. Okay. Good afternoon. I am also writing to you today regarding the issues of RVs on Lake Clear. The prestige of Lake Clear is one of the many reasons it is such a sought after lake to own property on. Allowing RVs on the shoreline will take away from that. If we allow clearings to be cut in order to let such RVs access to the shorelines. My biggest concern is who is responsible for sites and how do they plan to monitor it? Who is going to absolutely make sure no holding tanks are being dumped into the lake by said RVs at 2 a.m.? This is a guarantee you can't make. People will dump holding tanks either onto the ground, a hole they dug, or worst case into the lake itself. Dumping such tanks will have a drastic effect on our shorelines and our water. There are cottages to rent and two trailer parks people can use if they choose to spend a summer with us. I strongly urge you to consider this issue when discussing the RV situation. We failed to take stronger action against the zebra mussel situation and now they are something we will all be dealing with for the foreseeable future. Let's not mistake that again. Thank you for your consideration, Ian Kemp. To the members of Bonshire Valley Township Council. I write to indicate my opposition to the proposed bylaw that will permit up to four recreational vehicles with no septic and water hookups on any lot on Lake Clear. I understand that the submission of this letter will allow me to be part of a dispute mechanism if one is necessary after the February 16th meeting. I am opposed to the proposed bylaw because it is a contravention of a 
Bonshire Valley bylaw, a provincial policy statement, and the Renfrew County plan. If Bonshire Valley Council passes the bylaw, it would thereby be derelict in its obligation to uphold and enforce the policies provided by the provincial policy statement and the guiding principles in the 2020 Renfrew County official plan. Development is currently not permitted on Lake Clear, and this includes creation of new lots within 300 meters of the shoreline. RVs on waterfront properties are therefore a form of unregulated and unlawful development and should be subject to the same environmental restrictions as cottages. I am also opposed to the proposed bylaw because allowing RVs with no septic and water hookups and without being subject to setbacks from the lake will likely cause environmental damage due to a sensitive and beautiful lake. In recent times, we've all become more aware of how humans can cause long-term environmental problems, particularly those related to water quality. Lake Clear is unique because it has been managed by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry as a naturally reproducing lake trout lake, as well as a healthy population of walleye. These kinds of lakes represent only 1% of all lakes in Ontario. Lake trout are vulnerable to the impacts of human activities and require special protection. Moreover, Lake Clear has long been recognized as a unique lake that is at capacity. It received this designation in the official plan of the County of Renfrew in the 1980s when Lake Clear was part of Sebastopol Township. As you are probably aware, once a lake is identified as being at capacity, criteria for development are established on all lands abutting the sensitive lake. Furthermore, the MNRF strongly suggests that any development or redevelopment on a sensitive lake should be done in a matter that improves existing conditions. This potential environmental damage to Lake Clear is foremost in my family's thinking in regards to the bylaw you are considering. We all want to enjoy a clean lake, one that remains clear for future generations. I hope you will give careful consideration to those future generations in your deliberations on this issue. Please acknowledge receipt of this email so that I know it has been received. I look forward to discussion of this matter at the February 16th meeting where I expect a response to the concerns I have outlined above. Sincerely yours, Ed Gregorich. Dear Madam Mayor and BVT councillors, it is my understanding that you will be having a public forum regarding the bylaw amendment in BVT. To that end, I wish to be part of the discussion. I have read the proposed new bylaw and come away perplexed indeed. Council appears to have missed the point entirely. The issue here is unique to Lake Clare and not the township in general. The entire issue can be summarized in one word, development. Over the past number of years, Council has received information from numerous sources which clearly state the ecosystem in the area around the lake is saturated with all the development it can sustain. In fact, at least one source suggested it was beyond saturated and needed remediation. As you are all aware, there have been no severances permitted on lakefront properties some years now for this exact reason. More human habitation around the lake will only accelerate the degradation it is slowly undergoing. Development comes in numerous forms. One of the insidious ones is the proliferation of RVs. This purely and simply an end run around existing regulations allowing increased density of habitation. We don't permit four cottages on one lot. So why does it seem like a good idea for RVs? Please focus on the real problem and do not get lost in silly definitions of what an RV is and is not. If it walks like a duck, we know it's a duck. This is at best a distraction and at worst an obfuscation. Please focus narrowly on the issue. It is patently obvious that an RV is a cottage surrogate. So if one is permitted, it should be required to have a setback of 100 feet from shoreline as any other cottage and it must meet septic requirements like any other concrete and wood structure on the lake. Where is the logic around putting four of them on a single lot? Allowing multiple RVs on a lot of record is tantamount to ignoring the health of this body of water. The lake cannot support this kind of density. Please help us keep Lake Clear clear. No one wins if our grandchildren cannot swim there. 
you as our elected representatives have a responsibility to protect this irreplaceable resource. Once it is spoiled, no amount of regret or second guessing will help. Sincerely, J.M. Earl, 30 year Lake resident. Hello, Dana. I hope you and your family are safe and healthy. While we live in paradise, we still have issues to deal with. The issue of trailers on Lake Clear is a long and complex one. As you know, I ran for council to represent Lake Clear and spent many, many hours discussing this with Lake Clear residents. I can provide the council with an objective perspective if you deem this helpful, but there is one more thing I will comment now is the timing is not appropriate. Most people who own one trailer are away from their main residence because they cannot take the cold weather. They will not have a voice in this vote. Also, I believe this question is written unfairly as the problem is not trailer, it's trailers. Lake Clear is a sensitive ecosystem that has had its bouts with pollution and cannot afford black water or even brown water waste to be dumped into its watershed. I believe the council is on the right track to use a tax for long-term placement of trailers, though please consider this the issue of waste disposal both on our ecosystem and on our dump costs. The idea of trailers without proper wastewater disposal is a disaster for not only Lake Clear, but for the entire Bonister Valley. If the council is opening this can of worms, which I applaud, it should not take half measures. The council, in my opinion, should consider this tax and monitoring responsibility be for the entire municipality. Thank you for considering my opinion on this matter. My best to all those in service to our municipality, Val Collins. As residents of Bonister Valley Township, we are in favor of the new amendment bylaws surrounding trailers within our township. Thank you, Zach and Shauna Plotz. Hello, Mayor Murphy and Bonisher Valley Township Councillors. I am part of the Lake Clear O'Brien clan. You may be familiar with my parents, Terry and Betty. Dad grew up in Eganville and returned with mom during his retirement. Both were great contributors to the fabric of Eganville from my dad's hands in the development of Fairfields to my mom's work with drama for seniors. Our ancestors settled and farmed in the area and held direct ties to the old Eganville Hotel. I am writing to object to the proposed amendment to bylaw 2006-28, which would allow up to four Vs on each severed Lake Clear property. Lake Clear was a part of my dad's life from his youth, where he worked summers on a farm near Cormac and continued to be part of our family's life to the present day. I am sure this story can be told many times over by the cottagers and homeowners on Lake Clear. All of the cottages and homeowners I have met are dedicated to the protection of the lake and are particularly aware of its sensitivity and the fact that it is already at capacity. I urge you to vote against the proposed amendment to bylaw number 2006-28 of the Corporation of the Township of Bonisher Valley. I have heard that MECP has indicated that Lake Clear is over capacity. I can't understand the thinking behind this proposal except to generate money at the expense of the fragile lake. Since you are probably aware of the laws set up to protect the lake, I can only hope you will adhere to them and listen to your heart. We need to join together to protect Lake Clear for our generation and future generations. Sincerely, Patricia Murphy, O'Brien. Mayor Murphy, I have been a property owner on Lake Clear for 35 years and have not regretted voicing for you over the years, voting for you over the years, as I think you have represented me well. Regardless, I have to tell you that I am disappointed and upset at the recommendation by council in its proposed bylaw for RVs. I will not repeat all the reasons they have already been well documented. Without doubt, this bylaw has the potential of harming our lake and reducing our property values. As my representative, I am asking you to rethink this issue and not, not pass this bylaw. You are better than this. I am certain there is a compromise solution that is fair to all. Please find it. Respectfully submitted, Roy Schultes. Good morning. I am writing to you today regarding the upcoming decision re-RVs on Lake Clear. My family has enjoyed the pristine beauty 
that Lake Clear offers for 50 years. It is my family's legacy and the pursuit to keep the lake clean and enjoyable for generations is paramount to us and many on the lake. Allowing RVs on the shore of the lake that do not recognize or hold themselves to the current standards of other cottages on the lake is unfair to those who have called it home for decades, as well as the brings significant risk to its fragile environment. We need to do better, and I ask that you consider the broader implications of your decision as you discuss the RV matter in the upcoming meetings. Thank you, Sarah Kemp. Attention Dana, my family owns property on Lake Clear. We do not have a cottage, but we do want to use a trailer. We grew up on the lake swimming and now my grandchildren will be doing the same. If and when we use the trailer, we are using our property rights to enjoy our property that we pay for. I support your decision to let us use our RVs. Thank you, Wanda and Ian Newman. Hi. To whom it may concern, my name is David Eastwood, my wife Catherine Eastwood, with our two now adults, Andrew Eastwood and Lindsay Eastwood. We have a cottage at 1245 with Key Road, Eganville, Ontario. I am writing this email on behalf of our four family members who all feel the same way regarding this issue of RV trailers on our lake. We don't agree with this new proposed bylaw. We don't have a problem with the occasional use or storage of trailers on lake properties as long as they remove garbage, waste, water, etc. in proper containers and dispose of properly. We do have a problem with permanent use of trailers for the entire summer and winter. That is our two cents on the issue. Thanks. Take care, David, Catherine, Lindsay, and Andrew. To BVT Council. I would like to state that I am in total agreement with the proposed bylaw allowing up to four trailers on a lot. First of all, this in my opinion would only happen in rare circumstances and that would be where one would have to have enough land to space them out so that it is comfortable and enjoyable camping experience. I fit into that category. I own two properties on Lake Clear for a total of 26 acres and 4,550 frontages. On the one lot, I have three trailers that are used for family camping and they stay there year round. Being retired, I tried to spend eight weeks at mine, but the average has been six weeks in the summer only, as nobody would stay in a trailer in the winter. My son spends up to two weeks and some weekends in his, and the last trailer is used maybe three weeks in the summer. On occasion, my grandson may bring his trailer up for a weekend visit. We have four outhouses on this property and the gray water leaching pits for trailers that can stay on it. These are located on the lot that has 2,900 feet of frontage. So even with four trailers on it, it would work out with one trailer up to 725 feet of frontage. I am glad that council has taken into consideration that there are some large lots out there that family with their kids and grandkids can enjoy the camping experience. Secondly, I will point out that because I'm surrounded by Crown land, I had no choice due to township bylaws to put anything else other than trailers on my property. Your building inspector had visited my property when I first put the trailers there and I found I was in compliance with the outhouses and leaching pits. I value my property and my lake and keep a strict watch so there is no abuse. One last note in reference to D. Philman's piece in the leader. I think it is absurd that anyone would put four RVs on a 50, 200 foot lot or on islands. His article along with the LCPOA article on this proposed bylaw is just to incite readers who don't have all the RV facts. The LCPOA has never had membership votes to justify their stand on these bylaw changes. In addition, all their surveys are slanted to give the results that their little committee of trailer haters want. I hope council will stick to their proposal and not be bullied into changing the clarification that was asked for. Thank you, Murray Weckworth. To be Sandra. This is a continuation of Murray's. Oh, carry on. Okay. Then I'll, then I'll start. Okay. okay. Oh. I would like to state that I do not have any concerns with the proposed changes to bylaw 2006-28. Murray Wetworth. 
Thank you. Good morning, Dana and Annette. My name is Jeff Bean and my wife and I have owned 551 Lake Clare at Lake Clare since October 2000. We have learned of the proposed zoning amendment, which will be presented at the meeting on the 16th of February with regards to zoning and definition updates for trailers and recreational vehicles. I felt compelled to share my thoughts on the subject after reading the details in the presentations which have been provided on the subject. I support the proposed amendment. Like many other people in Bonisher Valley, I share concerns about the health of Lake Clear and its ability to support various species, including trout. I also share some of the concerns that LCPOA has presented. However, there has been little progress to improve the oxygenation of the lake in the 20 years I've owned property, according to current data. After reviewing all the information presented, there is no clear link to me that limiting trailers and recreational vehicle use at Lake Clear will improve the situation or the ecosystem. I understand two of the large negative contributors to lake health are shoreline changes which negatively affect or reduce drainage and human activity associated with septic tanks. The link between trailer RVs and these two contributors is not clear to me. Trailers and RVs have self-contained water systems or could have access to existing systems on the property they are located. I believe that if we want to improve the lake, we are much better served by encouraging responsible use of the lake and minimizing shore erosion or changes which reduce vegetation. Focus should be placed on improving the shoreline where possible instead of limiting property owners' ability to be at the lake. The more people who are aware of the lake and what can be done to improve the situation will be a far more constructive solution. I am fortunate enough to have a four season building on my property. Not all property owners may be in the same position. Who am I to limit how someone else uses their property if they are not detrimentally hurting the lake? Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Sincerely, Jeffrey Bean. Mayor of Bonisher Valley and Council, this shall serve to confirm my dis disapproval of the amendment proposed to bylaw 2006-28 for the reasons stated below. Lake Clear remains at capacity, mitigation is required, and Lake Clear must be treated differently from the rest of Bonisher Valley, thus par paralleling the provincial policy statement in Renfrew County official plan. Development is not permitted on Lake Clear, including the creation of new lots within 300 meters of the shoreline. RVs on waterfront properties are a form of unregulated and unlawful development and should be subject to the same taxes and restrictions as cottages. The BVT bylaws, Renfrew County and Bonisha Valley Township official plan and the provincial policy statements all recognize the unique and fragile status of Lake Clear and the BVT bylaws do not permit the use of RVs as cottage replacements or supplements. BVT Council is derelict in their obligation to uphold and enforce the policy direction provided by the provincial policy statement and the guiding principles contained in the Renfrew County Official Plan 2020. Cheryl Torrance. Mayor Murphy and Bonisher Valley Township Councillors. This letter is to express my objection to the proposed bylaw allowing four trailers on a single property in BVT with the exception of the town of Eganville. I am a longtime cottage owner on Lake Clear. I cannot put a guest cottage on my property with proper setback and septic, but you want to allow four trailers with no conditions attached and no tax paid. That makes no sense. Most of the properties on Lake Clear have small lots. Why is the town of Eganville exempt from this bylaw with similar size lots? That makes no sense. Lake Clear is officially designated an act capacity lake by government officials who are qualified to make these assessments. You have chosen to ignore. You want to allow four trailers per lot with no conditions attached relative to wastewater, septic, setbacks, and taxes. That makes no sense. Overall, not a very good plan. I look forward to your reconsideration of this ill-conceived bylaw. Yours truly, Lori McDonald. Township of Bonisher Valley, attention Dana Jennings, Planning, Zoning, and Community Development. Dear Ms. Jennings, the ministry has reviewed a proposed zoning bylaw amendment that would allow up to four recreational vehicles to be located and occupied on a lot in the rural residential four, limited service residential one and limited service residential two zones. The bylaw amendment as drafted indicates that up to four recreational vehicles may be permitted on properties that fall within these four zones. Ministry staff are concerned that the increased density on rural lots that is serviced by a private septic system and individual well will exceed the capacity of these services for which they were designed for. Further, the potential of increased development along shoreline areas of the township may impact water quality in the lakes, in particular Lake Clear, which is at capacity. Consideration of environmental lake capacity is a matter of provincial interest under the provincial policy statement. The County of Renfrew official plan also has numerous policies aimed at protecting lakes and other water bodies and promoting appropriate sewage and water servicing. As currently proposed, the bylaw does not recognize the at capacity status of Lake Clear. To assist the township in ensuring the proposed bylaw amendment does not impact the water quality, the quality of water resources that are relied upon for drinking and recreational purposes, the ministry recommends 
that one, consideration be given to ensuring that the proper number of recreational vehicles on each property is appropriate for the water and sewage services they were designed for. Two, consideration to the assessment of cumulative impacts on groundwater for drinking water and environmental lake capacity of the township's lakes, in particular Lake Clear. Three, work with the County of Renfrew planning staff to ensure the appropriate standards, setbacks from shorelines, prohibition of development on lakes at capacity align with the county official plan. Consider how the township will manage other appro approvals which may be needed, building permits and septic approvals. And five, consider how the township will inspect and enforce compliance, i.e. septic systems. If you have any questions or would like more information, please do not hesitate to contact me. MECP staff are available to work with you should you request additional technical expertise on this matter. Regards, John Orpana, Environmental Planner, Environmental Assessment Quarter, Coordinator, Ontario Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. Hello, Mayor Murphy and Council Members. I attended the meeting yesterday and did not hear my email read. I am assuming it was one of the last where time ran out. I want to reiterate my position concerning RVs on Lake Clear. Of course, the environment must be at the top of these deliberations as we are all invested in continuing to protect the health of the lake and watershed. It also is worth noting that having a desirable property means that we continue to financially support the township and surrounding communities. Indeed, this is a win-win situation for all involved. To determine that four RVs per property, regardless of size, where they can be parked, length of time, seems to lack the proper considerations needed. As some others yesterday stated, please take the time to reflect, research, and thoughtfully consider decisions made today that will affect the future. To, oh, sorry. That was from Tina Shane. To Mayor Murphy and Montreal Valley Township Council, we are in agreement with the proposed zoning bylaw amendment 2006-28 regarding RVs. Thank you for your time and effort on this issue. Amy uh, Felliber and Bill Wheeler. To whom it may concern, as residents and taxpayers of the Township of Bonisher Valley, we are concerned about the effects of the proposed change and therefore urge Council to vote against the amendment. Our concerns focus on the population density within the Township and the resulting increase in noise, pollution, uh, diminishment of privacy, negative environmental effects on lakes and streams, strain on our garbage disposal infrastructure, and risks that septic waste disposal regulations will be flouted. In addition, the cost to control and regulate the burden of an increased population will place a further financial strain on the existing taxpayer base. We would also point out that some years ago, council voted to limit the extent to which properties could be subdivided, in part to avoid many of the issues at the center of our concern. This amendment directly circumvents the intent of that amendment. Yours truly, Gordon Reed and Leanne Bulger reed Hi, Dana. I heard that council would still accept input on the proposed changes to 2006-28. My previous letter of support for this did, did not go into much detail as to why I believe that members of the LCPOA do not really care about pollution caused by RVs and are just using that as an excuse to get rid of them. The attached gives my reasons for that conclusion. It includes actual facts that RVs give minimal impact to lake water pollution. If you could forward it to council, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, lake pollution issue. During the past five years, certain members of the LCPOA have been stating that they are very concerned about the quality of waters in Lake Clear. Their main concern has been focused on pollution entering the lake and that the RVs camping trailers are a major cause. They quote MNR statistics about sensitive lakes to make their points. However, one has to wonder if they are really worried about pollution entering the lake or do they just hate RVs? Victor Castro, an MNR scientist whom they regularly quote, has given me the following estimates of phosphorus, a major pollutant from septic systems versus RVs that have outhouses and leaching pits, dry wells. These are taken from a paper entitled A Review of the Components, Coefficients and Technical Assumptions of Ontario's Lakeshore Capacity Model. Patterson et al. 2006 and the Lakeshore Capacity Assessment Handbook, MOE 2010. From these we get permanent home, 1.69 kilograms phosphorus per year, seasonal cottage, 0 0.46 kilograms of phosphorus per year, seasonal RV, 0 0.12 kilograms of phosphorus per year. From the above, we see that a permanent home has 1.14 times the pollution of an RV, and even a cottage has four times the pollution than from an RV. Even without the above statistics, isn't it reasonable that a full-time home would give more pollution of this type than a seasonal residence? Also that a seasonal cottage gives more than a seasonal RV. Also in the past five plus years, have these people approached council with petitions to prevent new homes from being built or that no more building permits for cottage enlargement, enlargements be given? If they are so concerned about pollution, wouldn't that be a better way to keep pollution from entering our sensitive lake? 
These same individuals seem to believe that property owners who have RVs on their land do not care about pollution, that they will dump waste waters anywhere on their land, yet they have no concern about the increase in campers on our lakes islands. These campers have no ties to the property. They set up their tents close to the water's edge. Their toilet is an open bottomed box that is supposed to be 100 feet from the shore. If you take a walk on these camping islands, you will see a lot of campers have not used these toilets and found places much closer to the shore to do their business. Where do they dump their wastewater? In the lake? Have they petitioned the LCC responsible for these islands to close down these polluted campsites? In this same period, these members have claimed that the LCPOA membership is behind them in their quest to limit or remove RVs from the lake. Not once have they asked the membership, do you have an issue with RVs on Lake Clear? The closest they came was to put out a survey that asked the question, are you concerned about the quality of water in Lake Clear or something to that effect? I believe most replies were yes. I know I replied yes as well. In my case, it was the pollution from seagulls that concerned me. How can they claim that this survey results indicate an issue with RVs? And finally, up until last year, the position of Lake Steward was a member of the LCPOA's executive. Now that position reports to an LCPOA committee. The reason this is important is that the Lake Steward's main function is to take readings pertaining to the quality of the lake water. If the LCPOA is so concerned about the lake, why remove the one person who has direct knowledge of this from its executive? Could it be that they do not want its membership to know? The findings. Do the findings show that the quality of lakes of the lake's water is actually improving, even with the so-called explosion of RVs. From all of the above actions and more importantly non-actions by these individuals over the past five plus years, I can only conclude that they do not really care about the quality of our lake's water, that they have taken a dislike to RVs and have used pollution as the main reason to get rid of them. I want to reiterate, I do not have an issue with Council's proposed changes to the bylaws regarding RVs, nor do I have an issue with either the Township's issuance of building permits or the LCC's oversight of campgrounds on the islands. I am proud of our lake and believe that the residents of our Township do care about our environment. Herb Weckworth. So I have one more and I'm going to, so I'm just going to go ahead and read that. I'm unequivocally opposed to the proposed amendments to bylaw number 2006-28 of the Corporation of the Township of Bonisher Valley pursuant to section 34 of the Planning Act. In fact, I'm actually shocked that our BVT council members have even considered creating such an irresponsible bylaw as one which would allow our recreational vehicles to be placed without restrictions on each property in Bonisher Valley except in Eganville. Why was there not why was there not also been an exception for Lake Clear? BVT Council is well aware that Lake Clear has for over 20 years been designated for environmental reasons and at capacity lake. I shouldn't have to reiterate this. Council knows this. In this day and age, when the environment of our planet is a worldwide issue, I cannot comprehend a group of individuals choosing anything other than reducing the number of recreational vehicles allowed within 100 feet of Lake Clear, as well as establishing sensible controls for the use of any they might allow. To actually propose increasing the number to four with no restrictions is beyond belief. I believe most property owners want a reduction just as the Ministry of Environment recommends. Has the amended number been increased to four as a ruse or that three may later be seen as a viable solution when it isn't? The environment is the key to the controversy regarding this proposed bylaw. The changes proposed in the bylaw are in direct opposition to the written recommendations by the province and Renfrew County OP, the advice of Victor Castro, a scientist with MECP, the Ontario Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, the legal op opinion written by Johnny e. Summers, a lawyer with Bell Baker, LLP, specialist in municipal law. Provincial documents outline certain restrictions for structures and RV are listed as being structures. Why has council deleted the term structure from their definition of a recreational vehicle? Even our everyday household dictionary defines a recreational vehicle as a movable home. A home is further defined as a dwelling and a dwelling is then defined as a structure. A legal site states RV means vehicle, vehicular portable structure built on a chassis designed to be used as a temporary dwelling. Temporary is defined as either seasonal or lasting for only a time. For example, lasting for a time only could be the interim as you wait for your home under construction. However, this proposed new bylaw could allow a couple to reside with, with their children and grandchildren in four RVs without any restrictions for years and years. Why would one actually contemplate building? Just think of the taxes which could be avoided, the freedom to locate your RVs anywhere, and being able to self-regulate how wastes could be disposed. All this versus the high cost and multitude of restrictions if you were to build a new home. 
Yet 20 years ago, when we built our home on Lake Clear, we were required to locate it, including its deck, at least 100 feet from the lake. Furthermore, the building inspector informed us we'd never be able to get a variance to do otherwise. The placement of our home and garage had to follow strict legal setbacks from property lines and a boathouse was forbidden. To purchase our waterfront, a legal document had to be signed to verify our promise to retain a large portion of the natural habitat along the shoreline. There are no regulations such as these for RVs under this amended bylaw. Shortly thereafter, a home was built directly on Lake Clare's waterfront, ignoring all prescribed setbacks. How could this happen? Considering our experience, we wondered why BVT would make such a decision. Where is their consistency? When I was young, I was taught that I should never disagree with someone. I should attempt to put myself in the other fellow's shoes. I'm not now trying to do this in regards to BVT Council's position on RVs. To accomplish this, I'm employing a hierarchy for decision making, working my way from the use of preference to peer pressure to logic to moral principles to assess the reason for the proposed amendments to bylaw number 2006-28. So I'm asking myself, how did our BVT mayor and councillors make their decision? Did they make their choice because they just preferred it to the alternative? Sure, it's all right to make some decisions this way if anyone prefers to eat a perfectly ripe and beautiful apple rather than a perfectly ripe and beautiful orange at any particular moment what's the harm in choosing the apple for the that matter the orange I therefore ask myself what is it about allowing four recreational vehicles to be placed anywhere on any piece of property including on the hundred foot ribbon of life the shoreline of an at capacity lake without any conditions that makes it more appealing than the alternative decision the one which would protect the health of Lake Clear does council just prefer to allow four RVs anywhere on Lake Clear property with no restrictions rather than protect the health of the lake should I assume council simply simply makes important decisions based on preferences and is indifferent to more in-depth considerations? Surely important choices are not being made according to initial inclinations. Two, sometimes we make choices due to peer pressure. I must admit that sometimes it's all right to make decisions this way, but it isn't always wise. If our friends decide to see a particular movie and we personally prefer, prefer to see a different one, we may choose to join our friends. On the other hand, if our friends wish to do something nonsensical, illegal or immoral, we all hopefully will refrain from participating, but also condemn their actions. Why are our BVT mayors and councils not following the route of the province and Renfrew County OP are recommending, the route which other Ontario municipalities have taken for lakes, which are not even deemed at capacity, as is Lake Clear? Where is the peer pressure? Who is influencing our mayor and councils, and what's their rationale? Hopefully, council has not been influenced by any peer pressure other than that of the province and Renfrew County OP and other Ontario townships who value their lakes. Sometimes we make a choice because it's a logical one. For a complicated decision, we must be logical. Where is the logic behind a decision that denies the fact that four recreational vehicles placed anywhere on a piece of property with no restrictions will eventually damage the lake, whether it's sensitive or not? Surely in this day and age, everyone is aware of the global concerns of lakes and rivers. The council has been provided with Victor Castro's scientific expertise and a legal opinion regarding RVs at Lake Clear. Where is the logic behind ignoring these experts? Four, sometimes we have to reach even higher to moral and ethical principles when making a decision. What moral questions come to mind? I can think of two possibilities. Which of the two moral principles below appears to be more important to our BVT mayor and councillors? The health of Lake Clear. Are we the custodians for future life on earth or do we only care about what happens right now? What is our obligation to the health of Lake Clear and to those who presently own property on this body of water and those who will in the future? B, property rights. Mr. Dampsey, a Lake Clear property owner, suggested in his letter to the leader that RV usage is a property right and therefore shouldn't be restricted by bylaws. He seems to be suggesting that we should allow, be allowed to do anything we wish on our own property. I know my answer and I believe I know the answer for most Lake Clear property owners, as well as most of society. The health of Lake Clear is far more important than property rights. For this reason, I had no argument with the building restrictions when our home was built. Similarly, for the health of others, not only for myself, I wear a mask due to the COVID pandemic. I don't feel that COVID rules negate my freedom any more than the laws that require my keeping the speed limit when driving my car. I respect the safety of others as well as myself. Are we not our brother's keepers? Are we not the keepers of the environment, which includes the health of our lakes? What is council's rationale behind the proposed bylaw? Try as I might, I'm unable to understand their decision-making process of our, of our BVT mayor and councillors. So I ask our municipal leaders directly, what is your justification for proposing this new bylaw? Joanne Monaghan. And she attached a letter from the Ministry of Environment that just basically says, thank you uh, for your information. And we already heard from MECP, so I'm not gonna read the attachments, but that was the, the comments directly from Joanne Monaghan. Yes. 
Mayor Murphy. Thanks for unmuting me. <clears throat> I just noticed that there are a couple of people that aren't muted, uh, Annette. Um, that being said, I think uh, council deserves a five minute break. Go get yourselves a cup of coffee, use, have a bio break, get some water and we will resume at 1110. Thank you.
Welcome back all. Um, I, I apologize. I think I said that council needed a break or deserved a break. And I meant to say our wonderful staff deserved a break after an hour of reading. So my apologies. I, I, I realized it after I, I said it. Um, so uh, Annette, who's next on the roster? Dana's next. Excellent. All right, Dana, over to you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, dear Mary, Mayor Murphy and BVT council members, I'm a member of the Lake Clear Property Owners Association and with my family have enjoyed close to 30 years of three season residents at Lake Clear. From the beginning of our time here, we have appreciated the efforts that property owners have made to maintain water, water quality. With this in mind, I am very concerned to hear that you are considering a bylaw to allow up to four recreational vehicles to be placed on any Lake Clear lot with no septic and water hookups. It doesn't take much imagination to understand the risk that such a bylaw would exert on Lake Clear's water quality. As a former, former avion ecologist who worked on water contamination issues on, on the Great Lakes, I have been heartened by the general trend over the last over the past three decades to improve our safeguards on the on the quality of Ontario's water surface waters through judicious legislation, legislation and regulation through the education of, of governments, federal, provincial, and municipal, industries, businesses, and individual citizens. For the Boncher Valley Township Council to allow the presence of RVs on lands adjacent to the lake with a proper setback requirements and regulation of sewage waste would be an incomprehensible return to the 1960s and 70s when people did what they felt like on their property with lit little to no understanding of the impl implications for environmental conditions. In fact, such a bylaw would fly in the face of existing municipal and provincial environmental safeguards, including Lake Clears at capacity and sensitive status, and beg the question of who this bylaw would be intended to serve. The question is not whether RVs should be permitted on Lake Clear properties, but that they should be subject to the same environmental requirements related to water and septic hookups that fixed cottages are subject to. I urge you in your upcoming meeting to base your discussion on precautionary principle and to make your decision against unregulated use of RVs on Lake Clear properties. Sincerely, Joan Rigolich. To Mayor Murphy and Bonjour Valley Township Council, we are in agreement with the proposed zoning bylaw amendment 2006-28 regarding RVs. Thank you for your time and effort on the issue. Sharon McGrath and Joe McGrath. To whom it may concern. This submission is in, in regards to the proposed new RV bylaw to amend bylaw number 2006-28 of the Corporation of the Township of Bonshire Valley as amended. I do not support or agree with the proposed uh, amendment proposal. Lake Clear is an at capacity lake and must be protected. BVT Council must meet their obligation to uphold the policy direction provided by the provincial policy statement and the guiding principle contained in the Brentford County Official Plan 2020. Specifically to execute and enforce the existing bylaws that protect, improve or restore vulnerable water and to consider the impact when considering shoreline development. Regards, Anne Sullivan. Hi Dana, just a couple of questions, not sure if they will relate directly. One, the allowance of no more than four trailers is a constant. Long weekends, some properties have almost a dozen trailers corralled on them just for the weekend. Two, will there be a requirement for the distance for uh, the trailer to be from the shoreline as in a building, a hundred feet from high water mark? Will there be a follow-up? Uh, sorry, this is number three. Will there be a follow-up that those trailers are using their internal holding tanks, not a barrel in the ground? We will listen in on the Zoom meeting. Thanks, the Joneses. Dear CAO, Council Members, Warden, and Ministers, Lake Clear has been designated at capacity, allowing and encouraging more RVs on, pro on lake properties, and for longer periods of time is wrong. It can only be detrimental for the health of Lake Clear. Among other added inputs to the lake, how many of these additional people were you thinking of welcoming are going to discharge septic waste into places where it will end up 
poorly filtered in the lake. Please do not allow further damage to Lake Clear. Sincerely, Carol Andrews. Attention Dana Jennings regarding letter to Boncher Township Council regarding the proposed four trailer bylaw. When I was told by a friend that there was to be a bylaw change that would allow every lot owner on Lake Clear to have up to four trailers on their lot, I laughed and said that must be a joke making the rounds. Who would possibly want to place literally hundreds of trailers around Lake Clear? Well, based on what I read in last week's leader, the joke is on us. I gather that Boncher Valley Township is indeed formally considering a new bylaw that will allow literally hundreds of trailers, more like more than a thousand actually, to be parked for use in and around Lake Clear, despite the fact that Lake Clear is already deemed to be Ontario Environment Ministry to be at capacity in terms of use. According, as a close neighbor who uses and enjoys the lake, I'm sending this letter to record my opposition to any such bylaw. I live minutes away from Lake Clear and enjoy the lake for boating and swimming during the summer months when we sometimes have summer. Because of this, I regard Lake Clear as a local gem. It is a beautiful bit of nature with clean and clear water, gorgeous islands, and overlooking by stunning cliffs that inspired a painting by one of the group of Canada's group of seven. Why anyone would propose to turn Lake Clear into what amount to one big unregulated trailer park is just baffling to me. Please cancel, do not approve this, this proposed bylaw. And thanks for allowing to comment by letters on this issue, Peter O'Malley. To the attention of Mayor Mur Murphy and councillors at Boncher Valley Township. I am a property owner and a seasonal resident on Lake Clear, and I'm concerned with the proposed bylaw amendment concerning the use of RVs in Boncher Valley, specifically with respect to waterfront properties on Lake Clear. My concerns are that the proposed bylaw is envir environmentally irresponsible and fiscal incredible to uh, municipal taxpayers. One of the key responsibilities entrusted to a municipal government is the environmental well-being of lands and bodies of water within their jurisdiction. The ability to place up to four RVs on any property in the township without regard to location, land sensitivity, property size, or water footage, and without uh, regulation respecting septic or lake setbacks introduces significant risk to the water quality and the surrounding environment. The existing reg regulations applicable to permanent structures were introduced as part of a responsible approach by local government to mitigate the risks associated with human behaviors and to ensure the environmental well-being of said lands and water bodies within the municipality. Without seeing a risk benefit analysis, I do not understand what is the what is driving the proposed proposal to essentially circumvent ex existing regulations established by responsible government for certain residents in the township. There is also an inherent municipal tax inquity that arises when permanent structures are fully uh, taxed while recreational vehicles are exempt, even if they are intended to be and are used for the same purpose and in the same manner as a permanent structure. In the absence of transparent disclosure on the risk benefits and the ultimate proposal of the proposed bylaw, it is difficult to understand why council is proposing excluding some residents from its existing regulations or municipal tax requirements and introducing environment environmental risk to such a key asset of the municipality. As a resort, as a result, I am not supportive of the proposed bylaw as it stands. Thank you, Des Madigan. Hi, Council. I have written a previous email about the change in the bylaw, which I am adamantly against. My questioning today is about how did we get to wanting to change to four trailers per lot? I would all I would have thought that a person or persons wanting to put a trailer one on their lot would approach the council and request permission, which possibly would have been granted. Why are we up to trailer number? Why are we up to trailer number or four? To me, that is a huge jump from one. And now having it to apply to the properties all around the lake. How did or where did we go from one to four on each 
on each and every property. Who was it, a group that approached council to request the, the change from a couple of extra around the lake to possible hundreds? Why did council jump from basically zero to hundreds of possible trailers? This to me seems like, like an extreme. Who or what pressured the council to go to this extreme way? This seems so extreme to me. Not everyone around the lake would want to put up four trailers on their property. Why did we just not deal with the one or two that wanted this? This is crazy and will definitely affect the lake, the quality of the lake. What are you people thinking? Sincerely, Judy Dewis. Dear Mayor, Mayor Murphy and council members of Boncher Valley Township, I have received a response on behalf of the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks to a copy of my letter of ejection to the proposal to the proposed recreational vehicle bylaw I sent to the minister. In the letter, the minister advises that, among other things, the ministry has written to BVT Council with, with respect to the issue. They did not send me a copy of the reference letter, and I do not think it has been tabled by council. I would therefore request that council read the, that correspondence into the record at this public meeting or soon thereafter, so as to enter it into the public record. The, the letter I received on behalf of the minister has prompted a number of new questions for me about the proposed bylaw. The most important for me is that the ministry points out that the size of the impacted area, which will be able to use up to four trailers as accommodation goes well beyond just Lake Clear. The proposed by bylaw encompasses four classes of res residential and rural zoning areas throughout the entire township. I note that even the notice for today's meeting inc includes that the proposed bylaw affects all lands within the township and their fee uh, therefore a key map has not been attached. I strongly recommend that a map be provided indicating what the potential density of RVs would look like. In light of this, I ask the following questions. How many lot owners and lots throughout uh, Boncher Valley Township will be eligible under the proposed bylaw to put up to four RVs on their property? Can a map of the eligible lots, including the number of potential RVs for, for accommodation in each area area be tabled now or at the next council meeting so that the residents of Boncher Valley can see the potential impact throughout the whole township. Why is the township of why is sorry, why is the town of Eganville excluded from the effects of the bylaw? Since this is just not a Lake Clear matter, what kinds of public consultations or public meetings, if any, have taken place within property owners throughout the township regarding the perspective overall impact of the bylaw on their properties and their waste sources on, on and on other matters of concern? Where, when and where were these held? What competent authorities were retained and invited to address the general impact? Are there reports or minutes regarding discussions and any outcomes of change during the consultations? And if so, can you kindly share them with your constituents? Have the residents of Eganville, Douglas, Renfrew, and other municipalities downstream from Lake Clear, Golden Lake, and, and, and other water bodies impacted by the proposed bylaw been advised by Council of the potential contamination of the non-regulated influent discharge from the recreational vehicles on their drinking and recreational water? Does Boncher Valley Township and or Council carry sufficient liability insurance in the event that a prospective case or cases are brought forward for damages caused by heedless concerns for the potential downstream environmental con contamination either within our township or adversely impacting communities outside our township? Has the Council considered that the adverse environment impacts of this proposed bylaw appears to violate the 1993 Act establishing the Ontario Environmental Bill of Rights and that two citizens in the township can subsequently appeal under the terms of, of, of the, that Act for an official review and investigation by the Minister and by any other affected provincial ministries? As a general point, we have an existing bylaw in place. The current bylaw deals with rec 
recreational vehicles as it does with a number of other regulations that all property owners must abide by. However, despite numerous requests to enforce compliance with its provisions, it has not been enforced. Why? Why is it that council ignores and does not enforce its lawful, lawfully enacted bylaws? Are you already in derelictation of your duty by repeatedly ignoring your own res responsibility to enforce the law, law lawfully enacted bylaws of your township, the Renfrew County Official Plan and or the Planning Act, since it is clear that council and staff have been evading their responsibility on this matter and allowing a legal circumvention for several years. Can you please explain your reasons for this refusal to enforce a lawfully enacted bylaw and the Renfrew County Official Plan? Bontrager Valley Township depends on very fragile economic foundation. Do we have electric vehicles being built here? No. Are semiconductors being assembled in the township? No. Do we manufacture basketball sneakers? No. What do we what what we do have is a logging and lumber industry and tourism, as well as people pursuing and enjoying recreational activities closely associated with the natural beauty and our natural wildlife and fishing assets. So I ask you, what is the vision behind a new bylaw that will allow such a ma massive increase in RVs throughout the township? Seriously, where is council going with this vision? What will council say to the merchants of Eagleville when tourism drops off due, the, due to the lakes and rivers becoming polluted and oversaturated of unregulated recreational vehicles being used as accommodation throughout the township? What will your responsibilities be to the residents of Eganville and the rest of the Boncher Valley when the mill rates are dramatically increased due to valuable waterfront properties falling in value? What what will you say to the ratepayers if a class, class action suit is brought against the township for a decline in personal property values? One thing for sure, you won't be able to say you weren't fully made aware of the repercussions. You were elected to protect, administer, and advance the welfare, the welfare of Boncher Valley Township. Your proposed bylaw does neither. It is an ill, Ill thought abrogation of your electric duties and you will have long-term harmful effects on this whole township and its good people. Why not show your strong leadership now and act proactively to protect the assets in your fiduciary custody for the common good of the citizens in the future prodigion of Brownshire Valley Township. I respectfully urge you to reject this proposed bylaw and start afresh by enforcing the well thought out existing bylaw. Thank you and may the force be with you, Kevin Gillis. Is that all the letters you have, Dana? That is correct. Okay, so then we'll move on to Sandra. Hi, Jennifer and council members. <clears throat> Absolutely, definitely no to four RV trailers on a lot. I own two properties on Lake Clear since in the early 1950s. They have been in the family since then. Since then, we have abided by all bylaws set out by the township council. I pay taxes on both properties, including the increases as they have done through the years. I live on a private road and do not get many services, if any, from the township other than the inspectors for any changes to the properties. I pay taxes on each property based on the buildings on them. Throughout the years, the Lake Clear has been a beautiful lake. With the help of local people residing on the lake that have done testing on the clarity of the lake and ministry recommendation of the water and land surrounding it. It has remained as its name, clear water. It has been an at capacity lake since the 1980s. <clears throat> in the recent years, its quality has been decreasing. I believe it is due to the increase in trailers around the lake, some with questionable septic systems. The council has not upheld the bylaw since then and allowed trailers to be put around the lake, which has increased the decrease in quality. The council has not requested that they be removed. Did the council check on whether the septic systems were according to the bylaws? Have they checked about the amount of setbacks? Are there extra taxes that should have been levied if the trailers are permanent? 
This attempt to change the bylaw, where did it arise from? Who came up with the magical number of four? It is totally against the bylaws. It is an insane amount of trailers on one property. I will agree to allow a trailer on a lot provided it has a confirmed septic or other connected to a regular system and goes by all the bylaws and zoning restrictions that the trailer is placed with the proper setback from water. I will also agree to trailers on a private property to allow for a family or friends for seasonal time. Would agree to allow trailers on a property for a limited use, i.e. for weekends, get together, two, three week vacations. Please, please do not pass this bylaw change. Sincerely, Judy Dewis. Hello, I am a property owner at Lake Clear and regard writing this letter to make clear my stance objecting to the proposed amendment to bylaw 2006-28 regarding the placement of RVs on Lake Clear. This has been the subject of many discussions between friends and family members over the years as enjoying our time on Lake Clear while planning and preparing for the future has been a priority, priority for anyone who has had the opportunity to cherish this lake. Mayor Murphy and the council's decision to proceed is shocking to me and it is clear that our opinions need to be heard. The amendment presents very real concerns which undermine the safety and sustainability of this place that we all share. The scientific studies and bylaws are in place to promote proper management of this fragile space. Overdevelopment either with permanent structures or RVs present a concern for how gray water and waste is managed or not managed, which in turn will affect the quality of the water and land around the lake. RVs need to be accountable in the same way that any other permanent, semi-permanent, or seasonal structure is managed. They should obtain the same municipal approval. Moving forward, this proposed amendment would create a reckless precedent for development on this lake and in turn, all of it, the lakes it feeds. Our responsibility is not only to shore owners of this lake, but every lake downstream. Please consider this. Lake Clear already has a resort whereby dozens of families enjoy camping, fishing, and boating in the spring, summer, and fall months. This presents an already significant environmental load on the lake. I and many community members have spent many hours cleaning up after people who unfortunately have not been respecting of this finite resource. I accept that this is a reality of sharing a place. However, I am trying to illustrate that we cannot continue to take steps to diminish these resources as this amendment does. Development is a fact of life. Development in this scenario must be done with respect and responsibility to the well-being of all. I am trusting that our mayor and elected council will listen to the overwhelming objection to this initiative. Sustainable development in this case requires a plan that manages the placement of RVs on Lake Clear that is consistent with the already established permanent and semi-permanent structures. I stand with many concerned family and community members in vehemently opposing the amendment to bylaw 2006-28 regarding the placement of RVs on Lake Clear as it is a clear attempt to find a loophole to the sustainable development of this ecosystem. With sincerity and respect, Dan Geniak. To Mayor Murphy and Bonisher Valley Township Councillors, I am a cottage owner on Lake Clear. Reasons for objection to this bylaw change. Already designated as an overcapacity lake. Health of the lake and environmental concerns with more people around Lake Clear is a major problem. Poor appearance of the lake and area if multiple RVs slash dwellings are allowed on lakefront lots, resulting in reduced property values. This bylaw change will create even more disputes between neighbors with the placement of RVs infringing on people's privacy and enjoyment. No economic gain for Bonshire Valley Township. In most situations, it will not increase the tax rate for BVT, but will increase demand and cost on infrastructure and regulation. Question for Council. Why is the Bonisher Valley Township proposing this bylaw of up to four RVs per lot? Help me to understand how this will benefit BVT and cottage owners around the lake. I don't believe the average cottage owner would want four RVs on the lot next door or on both sides. This bylaw blankets too many situations and is too broad. 
We need to be proactive in taking care of this wonderful lake so that we can all continue to enjoy our time at the lake. I ask that Bonnetshire Valley Township help to preserve it. Sincerely, Brian Radke, Geraldine Radke. Hello, please send login details for both myself and Don Penner to attend the public meeting on February 16th rezoning at Lake Clear. We are both property owners and full-time residents of Bonnetshire Valley. I have three points of concern. One, the proposal permits the increased usage of roads, waste sites, emergency services, et cetera, in the area by as much as a factor of four. Has the council made estimates of the increased costs and are there plans to cover them? Number two, do residents in places like Eganville support increased taxes to cover untaxed accommodations at Lake Clear? Three, will owners of 1950 era cottages be able to knock them all down and install up to four RVs with the land being taxed as vacant. Thank you. John Penner and Don Penner. Dear Mayor and Councillors, I am writing to you to state my objection to the proposed bylaw amendment concerning the use of RVs on Lake Clear. My parents built their cottage on Lake Clear in the early 60s and our family enjoyed all that the lake offered in recreational fishing, boating, and swimming. Like everyone else on the lake, we thought that this location was our slice of paradise and we continue to this day to have warm memories of our time spent at our lake. In the mid 1970s, my husband and I built our own cottage and our two sons basically grew up at the lake. One son was married to our dock. In retirement, we now spend six months at the cottage, but we have become increasingly concerned about the declining health of the lake. In more recent years, everyone has become much more enlightened and concerned about the environment, both globally and locally. At our local level, the MECP surface water expert has reported to you on two different occasions that our at capacity lake is now beyond at capacity and in need of immediate remedial action. Were you listening? Have you considered what that remedial action would look like? No, clearly you have ignored that advice and have now forged ahead with an ill-conceived bylaw that can only make things worse. Development within 300 meters of the shoreline and the creation of new lots is not permitted. Existing lots are restricted to, a, to one dwelling only, set back appropriately from the lake with approved septic systems. Sleep cabins are allowed, one per property, but without bathroom and kitchen facilities. So how can you possibly have contrived a bylaw that allows up to four RVs, most of which have kitchens and bathrooms, on, on waterfront properties with none of the same protections? And how can you have rationalized allowing those same RVs to coexist with an existing dwelling? Please take the opportunity, consult with land use planning experts and your legal advisors and reconsider this proposed bylaw amendment. At a minimum, if it is to be put into law, Lake Clear must be excluded from it. Sincerely, Wendy Taker. I am writing to express my opposition to the proposed bylaw, which would permit up to four trailers per lot on Lake Clear. I enjoy boating and swimming in Lake Clear, and I have many book club girlfriends who live there. I understand that Lake Clear is currently deemed to be at full capacity. Accordingly, any proposed additional development must be made with maintaining the health of the lake at heart. Lake Clear is a treasure and any development that would reduce the quality of the water and the cleanliness of the islands must not proceed. Each and every lot differs in size around the lake. I gather that there are some 300 plus lots on the lake. That means the council is approving up to 1,200 or so trailers to be placed around the lake. That's 1,200 trailers. Really? How will current septic systems deal with increased waste from what could be fourfold increase of people around Lake Clear? Given the need to protect the health of the lake and by extension, the well being of wildlife in and at the lake, I ask that this proposed bylaw be rejected by council clearly and forcefully. Thank you in advance for the opportunity to contribute to this issue. Sincerely, Francis O'Malley. We are in favor of the zoning amendment to allow trailers in the township. Don and Bev Axford. Dear members of BT Township Council, 
Having had a chance to review the new proposed amendment to the above bylaw, we are registering our extreme disappointment as it does not address the concerns being raised. For the sake of peace and security between neighbors, it makes no sense to allow someone to have four trailers of any size, a bunkie for up to eight people, a residential house, all on as little as a 75 by 150 foot lot. This is absolutely absurd. What is council trying to accomplish? More conflict? We submit the following comments. One, the number of RVs parked on a property should be directly related to lot size. That is a completely rational solution that council ignored. Two, the issue of the setbacks from water front high water marks has not been addressed. With up to four RVs parked at water's edge without any rules can significantly damage to shorelines, lakes, rivers. All issues that the County of Renfrew is trying to address in their planning. Perhaps this amendment is offensive to the goals of the County. Number three, section 1CC makes no sense and is poorly written. The way it is drafted will actually ensure that everyone will want to avoid any of those stated conditions as they will impose permits or imposes restrictions. Four, the bylaw does not address the potential commercial and business use of RVs being rented in residential areas when in fact they should be meeting the standards of a licensed designated trailer park. Good government is to support the public interests, which should include the pillars of ensuring good health, safety, and security. I see none of these pillars being considered in the proposed amendment. A blind eye has been given to important issues regarding environmental capacity, the strains cost of municipal services, garbage, roads, police, inciting potential for conflict over noisy, over noise, privacy, traffic, and other costs to other residents regarding where and upkeep of private roads. Please reconsider and properly address the unintended consequences that such an amendment may have on your constituents who choose to reside here for the rural advantages of nature, peace, and quiet. And you have obviously chosen not to live beside an unrestricted trailer park. Sincerely, James and Julie Callan. Dear Mayor Murphy and councillors, as a part-time resident of Bonisher Valley Township, I am writing to register my objection to the proposed bylaw regarding recreational vehicles in Bonisher Valley Township in its current form, especially as it, as it affects Lake Clare. This proposed bylaw has generated much attention and disagreement among residents and property owners in Bonisher Valley Township, and I hope that Council will consider a path forward that establishes a reasonable compromise and acknowledges that such a bylaw should include conditions aimed at protecting the environment and property values while allowing for continued enjoyment of Lake Clear by all. Although I do not object to RVs in general, I feel that consideration needs to be made for the special status of Lake Clear. Lake Clear is a trout lake and is prized by anglers, cottagers, and local residents alike. However, Lake Clear has been recently designated by the MNRF as beyond at capacity. Just a short drive away, Muskrat Lake demonstrates the sad reality of what happens to a lake beyond at capacity. I feel strongly that Lake Clear must be considered as an exception to the proposed bylaw in order to protect what we love about this lake and what we hope to pass on to future generations, not only from an environmental perspective, but also from a property value perspective. Regarding the specific proposed RV bylaw, I believe that RVs are being used as residents and should be treated and taxed as are all other residents on Lake Clear. They should be subject to the same regulations, example, setbacks, septics, etc., and inspections as all other residences. Special permits for RVs that are visiting the lake temporarily, for example, for a family reunion, should also be considered. I respectfully ask that Council revise the bylaw with the aim of achieving a balanced approach. We are so fortunate in Ontario to have the privilege to enjoy beautiful and plentiful freshwater natural resources. I hope that a balanced approach recognizes this very unique situation that we are in. Sincerely, Karen Smith. I am done.
Excellent job. Thank you for that, Sandra, Dana, and that. Um, it is 10 to 12. What I think I'm going to do is call for presentations uh, until 12.30. At 12.30, we will be taking a lunch break. Um, so with that, my goodness, very divisive issue at best. Um, there, there were some, uh, there were some errors in some of the uh, letters, which I will address when we get to um, comments and questions from council. I think that um, there needs to be some clarity with regards to the official plan, the provincial policy statement, um, MPAC assessment, uh, et cetera. So I will get to that later on. So when we're done with uh, the presentations and we come back from lunch, we will invite all of our guests to watch us on YouTube and, uh, and we'll have a, a chat. Uh, so right now I'm going to ask, again, if you've written a letter, that is your presentation, uh, but I'm going to ask for presentations by those in support of the bylaw. Uh, what you can do is at the bottom of your screen, uh, there's, a, there's a little button that says reactions. Um, if you uh, use your hand, Annette is showing you, uh, it says raise hand and uh, the raise hand icon will come up on your screen and uh, we can call on you and Annette will unmute you. Um, you have approximately two to three minutes um, because we wanna make sure that everybody that didn't write in uh, gets a moment to have their say. So at that, presentations by those in support of the bylaw. And Annette, I think I'm gonna have to rely on you to, to um, see everybody. Yep, I'm just viewing it's two screens. I'm not seeing any hands up. Um, I'll call a third time presentation by those in support of the bylaw. All right then, presentation by those opposed to the bylaw. So, okay, we do have, we do have a few. So uh, I'm just, I'm going to, Unmute them. So I think we had Tom O'Brien had his hand up, and I had Larry Croson who had his. I'm not sorry if I'm if it's Croson uh, had his hand up. So those are the two that I see. So I'm going to unmute uh, Larry first, and then Tom, and um, and I'll go from turn it back over to you uh, one at a time. Thank you. All right. Um, he's still uh, muted or not? So I've asked him to unmute. I'll do it again. Oh, there okay. he is. Hi, Mr. Cross, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm well, thank you, sir. Uh, so uh, Annette is going to be our timekeeper, so please take it away. I will try and keep it short. Good morning, uh, council and guests. I think it's still morning, a few more minutes, yes. Yeah. Uh, my name is Larry Cross and our uh, family has a permanent home on Lake Clear and many ancestors have been uh, on and around the lake for about, uh, uh, around the lake and Eganville and Cormac for about 150 years. Um, personally, I'm certified by the Law Society as a specialist in corporate and commercial law. Uh, I know that's not municipal law and I'm not a specialist in municipal law, but I have assisted a lot of businesses and nonprofits to deal with similar issues. So I feel like I've got a sense of what you're dealing with. Um, we've, you know, all listen carefully to many different points of view and it's, and it's, Unfortunate, I guess, to see how divisive this issue has become. Um, there are a lot of uh, many sp points of view that are divisive or strong sentiments that reveal, I guess, the troubling nature of the proposed bylaw. Uh, and we're also aware that people on both sides, you know, there are people on both sides of this bylaw who do not think it is the right answer. Uh, and yet we're kind of being forced into an all or nothing box. I think a lot of the other letters have recognized that it doesn't have to be an all or nothing box. And right now, you know, the way we see it is it's sort of like, you know, spraying a thirsty person with a fire hose. Um, what we really need to do is think about something more equivalent to a glass of water uh, for a thirsty person. Um, four RVs in our mind uh, is a random and inappropriate number. Nobody will argue with the Temporary use of an RV for occasional visitors. 
Uh, but allowing four RVs without any clear criteria is like opening floodgates, even to people who've probably never considered having an RV on their lot. Uh, if they suddenly see that this is a possibility, it might change their whole perspective on the lake. So the question I think becomes when and under what circumstances should an RV be permitted as a more permanent residence? Uh, there are specific allowances for sleep cabins or bunkies on the lake. There may be situations- One more minute depending on the size of the lot and the process for dealing with waste that would allow an RV as a more permanent residence, uh, along with proper support of our tax base. So I think, you know, zoning bylaws often deal with very specific areas. In this case, we've heard 99% of the people have been from Lake Clear. So you might want to consider starting with a bylaw only dealing with Lake Clear and thinking about, you know, you, while you can't please everybody all the time, it doesn't mean you have to throw darts. So I think it's worthwhile to going back to the drawing board and making it no more and no more or less than what is reasonably required. And I wish staff and council uh, temperance and transcendence and further dealing with this issue. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you very much for that. Um, that was very well said and we appreciate your expertise. And uh, yes, I will. we will take that under advisement. Thank you. Uh, I think Mr. O'Brien had his hand up at one point. Uh, that would be Tom O'Brien, because there are a lot of O'Briens. There, you're, you are unmuted, sir. And I yeah, thank you, thank you, Jennifer and uh, Council, and a, a big uh, applause to Annette, Dan, and Sandra. That's not easy to read through all those letters, so well done. Um, there wasn't an option for somebody who's neither for or against, so I had to pick one of the two. And it's not that I'm for or against, it's just that I've had the opportunity to speak to people on both sides, because it is very confusing. And there's a lot of arguments both ways. So I took the time to talk to people on both sides to try to understand. And even as I listened to all the letters, you know, Mike's summary is everybody, everybody um, just values the lake. That's pretty clear. Everybody would like to protect the lake. That's pretty clear. It's a question of how we go about doing it. Um, it did seem there was some confusion around the fact that there's no conditions attached to RVs. As far as I can tell, looking at the, um, the bylaw, there are conditions based on whether there was going to be a septic attached to water, whether it was attached to deck, etc. So I think that that would have to follow some kind of standard original um, requirements, bu building permits, whatever is required. So that makes sense. I think the bigger issue is, and it's, is the ones that aren't going to be connected to water or to um, septic or some kind of deck, it doesn't require any kind of permit of any kind. And I've talked to people on both sides and even people who how RVs are saying they don't necessarily think it makes sense to have four and that there is absolutely no requirement. So my feeling is that my advice to council is let's get some people on both sides to actually come up with a better solution overall. Um, I'm actually a professional facilitator for a living. I'd be more than happy to volunteer some time to make that happen. But I think that we're close and it just because it's an either or, as Larry was just mentioning, it's made it a, de a divisive uh, issue and it doesn't necessarily need to be. I think that there's a lot of things people are aligned on and there's an opportunity to get this get this right to protect the lake but also to give people the ability to bring family members and guests etc because right now it just doesn't seem to work. Well that is a wonderful offer. I truly appreciate that and um, be careful what you wish for because council will be talking about this this afternoon and uh, we will be asking you to send your information to Annette. Um, but um, I, yeah, perhaps the Planning Act should, add, should have presentations by those that want to compromise. So thank you very much for that. Um, I see Ms. Dewis has her hand up. I believe, however, you have submitted a letter. Am I correct? All right. So I'm going to move on. Um, are there any other hands up? Not that I can see. Not that I can see either. All right. Okay, well, at that, it is noon. Uh, great time for lunch break. I really appreciate everybody um, that, uh, that submitted, whether for or against. I'm sure that this will be a very interesting conversation with council this afternoon. Um, can we uh, reconvene? 
I want to make sure that Tim's back for, uh, I know he's on the line. Um, can we unmute Tim? I've asked him to unmute. He may be. I just want to know what time um, we should oh, reach. there he is. Oh, Tim, uh, are you good to reconvene at one o'clock or 1.30? He's unmuted, but, oh, maybe he's trying to speak. Tim, are you with us? He might be in a bad area. Okay, you know what, just for, um... I, I'm here now, uh, Jen, can you hear me? Oh, yes, hi, Tim. Uh, Tim, would you there, need, yeah. <laughs> no, no worries. I know uh, you're working while you're working. So we really appreciate that. Um, Tim, are you going to be ready to go at one o'clock or would you prefer I wait until 1.30? Would 1.30 be all right with the rest of council? Uh, yeah, I'll, I was going to pull them right after you. I got a thumbs up from Brent. Merv, are you good with 1.30? Excellent. And Jack. Awesome. Okay. So we will reconvene at 1.30. Again, uh, thank you to all of our guests. Please, please, please um, watch us on uh, on YouTube this afternoon at your pleasure. Uh, I, I think that um, council's got some stuff to chew on. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll reconvene at 1.30. So thanks, everybody. Have a lovely afternoon. Get out and enjoy this sunshine. Bye now.